Okay, I'm going to demonstrate now working the front of the body. For this demonstration, I've already done quite a lot of work into Mark's feet when he was lying face down. So I'm going to do less here and I'm going to demonstrate more working the front of the legs. However, if you were starting with the client face up rather than face down, before you did any kind of deeper work into the legs, you'd really want to release from the anchor point first. However, we are taking this from I've already worked into his feet and I'm going to start working into the front of his legs. The draping, of course, is important, but the great thing is it's just the same as what we've done, but in reverse. So when we get to the knee, I kind of use that as a hold point, And then that just gives me, this is the area where we're going to be working. I'm not coming up into the inside of the thigh in the same way I didn't when the client was lying face down. So, apply some oil. So this move is exactly what we did on reverse. I have my left hand cupping over here. So I'm not applying direct pressure onto this bone. But I am using the heel of my hand to come up the side of the leg. My fingers then come in to the muscle here. However, this is just a warm up at this stage. The right hand goes on top. My arms are straight and I'm just leaning into this move. When we get to the thigh, I can just spread, rather than using this point and this point, I can now spread and just come across. Sometimes when I'm doing this move, I might do more of the focus coming into the side, other times more of the focus coming into the top. But really just working across the top of the thigh. Just doing this movement several times will release 15, 20% of that surface tension. Now, if your client's really tall, or maybe you're quite small as a person, you can do this in stages. It's perfectly fine for you to work the lower part of the leg and then to work the top part of the leg. Or you can do it in one movement. Okay, doing some more detailed work now. I'm coming in. Working up the side here, I could use the heel of my hand or I can use my thumb just to work this muscle. So we start from the big toe, working down the side, working this area down the side of the foot, underneath the ankle bone here. Continue working up the side of the leg. You can also move the leg into this position, which then allows you to work more along here. If this calf is really tight and you want to do some more detailed work, Grab a chair and you can work from this position. Remember, if this area is remaining tight, always bring your attention back into the anchor point, which in this case is the big toe. It's a really good position to get into the side of this band of the big toe following this right up the side of the foot. Use your knuckles. Really doing some fine detail just working over this band here.
You can also work the thigh muscle um, under isolation, under pressure. What you can do is you can bring the leg over to the side of the table. Be very mindful of your draping. You can work the thigh across here, but what's a nice move here is to apply the pressure, like all the moves previously, we apply the pressure, and then we just lift. As you can tell, it can be quite intense, but it really gets a good release. Breathing mark, well done. How's that feel, Mark? Sore. Sore, but good, yeah? Good. Okay. I'm, do, I'm going to explain one more time what I'm doing here. So the last, apply the pressure, make the movement. Move to another position. Apply the pressure, make the movement. Okay, I'm going to show you a move here. You see this from two angles. So you're going to see it from, the beh from behind and then I'll do it again and you see it from a different angle. Um, it's working up the side of the thigh. Be mindful of the draping so you tuck the blanket over. You can get into this position. position, you can rest the leg on your shoulder and we're just squeezing down, working with the client's breath. This can be really quite an intense movement. And just shake it out. You can also work the feet. From this position, you can grab a stool. It's a lovely position to get into the feet. You can really get in between the toes here. Work the soles of the feet, even with the foot. The leg at a slight angle, you can come in and work like this. So now I'm just going to do exactly the same on Mark's left leg.
Working into the client's stomach can release a lot of physical tension and it can also lead to releasing a lot of long-held emotional tension. Um, stomach work does not have to be deep. In fact, I like to start off very gentle with the stomach work. It can be an area where the clients have, have not really received massage work before, so it's definitely something that you want to, to ease your way into. I always run it by my client first to kind of get consent to, and let them know and get their okay to, to work into their, their stomach. Um, I mean, I discuss every part that I'm going to just massage with the client anyway, so everything has got consent, but very specifically, I will check during the treatment and say, I'm going to work into your stomach, is that okay? So, we always work in a clockwise direction, which is the way the body's nat systems naturally flow, working in a clockwise direction. So, we have the center of the stomach, the belly button, which is, are we here, Mark? Yeah. yeah. And just either side of the, the belly button, we do have two bands. If you imagine the bands that on the client's back, it's literally the same, but front up. So these two areas. So working in a clockwise direction, we're literally working with the client's breath. So take a nice deep breath in, and as the client exhales, just apply some pressure and just work under that band. Deep breath. So coming around to this side and continuing that motion. Okay, so that has worked these two bands either side of the belly button. There's two more bands that we can work. And the way to find them, if you, if you have the, the center of the body and you have the side of the body here, it's roughly halfway between that point is where we can find this second band which runs through. Again, the client also dictates the speed of this treatment because you're working with their breath. Now, I want to talk to you about the breath. So as the client is exhaling, as they're breathing out, that's where you... The, apply the pressure, working with their breath. But the minute the client, the very second they start to inhale, you release the pressure. You fully release the pressure. It's very important that they can have the freedom to breathe in without any pressure against their stomach. So, moving out to this outer band. Here and here, halfway point, nice breathing, and really tight in here. Just flicking over that band. Coming up the other side. There's another move you can do to stimulate the whole stomach. I call it, it's like a Mexican wave with your hands. And we're just applying pressure in this sweeping movement. So working with the client's breath, nice deep breath in and exhale. So we're now going to work into, into Mark's shoulders, into his neck, into his scalp, and into the face. Just a little bit of oil is all you need. And we're going to continue working these bands, which can 
from we've been working on the back. I'm using my fingers like this, like a scoop, three fingers together, and I'm just. In some ways, the client will work with you. They will sink back if they want more pressure. They will kind of rise up if the pressure's too much. But of course, you should be checking in with the client to double check what the pressure is. You can work into the side of the neck. Whenever we move the head, everything has to be supported. So I'm going to tilt his head to the right hand side. So my right hand is going to support the head as I turn over and we just gently turn to the side, which then allows me to work. Kind of comes from the back of the ear, this band, I don't know if you can see the camera just under my finger. And it comes, this is the track that we're going. It comes down here into the top of the shoulder. You can initially just work, not too deeply, just to slightly warm this up. But in actual fact, a really effective way to work this band is just to do it very slowly, just to press and hold. Allow the client to breathe into it. And when we move position, it's a tiny position. We're literally just sliding down, that's it. Just a tiny move. And we've got a really nice release there. And we'll do the same on the other side. From here we can work into the head. We don't need a lot of oil. And we can just work across the forehead. Getting into these bands directly above the eyebrows. It can feel quite intense at the beginning, but it's one of these moves that Within a few strokes, it just eases off. And it's a very deeply relaxing move. Using your fingertips, you can work scooping into this band into the side of the eye and just coming up. You can either slide along the top of the eyebrow or you can work in pressure points, like so. Notice my fingers are raised so I'm not unnecessarily touching the face where it's not needed. Really just having as minimal contact as possible. You can work under the cheekbones. I like to stretch here and just work. So I'm kind of pushing my finger towards me to get scoop under the cheekbone and just work along like so. And the same on the other side. You can work into, there's three points across the nose, three sinus points we work into just across 
the top of the eyebrow here, just applying some pressure. And then just into the side of the eyes, just about here. And then at the top of the bridge of the nose. You can also work into the client shelf. You just ask them to relax the jaw and open up a little bit and you can work into the side here. This can feel very intense for a lot of people, especially if they've not had jaw before. Often tightness in the neck and the shoulder can be directly connected into tension and tightness in the jaw. You can work across, the you never come in under the jaw here, but you can work across, so I'm just using my thumbs here. I'm not applying pressure from underneath, just working along like so. You can also work the earlobes, just simply by squeezing, just squeezing around the edge of the ear. Following these points, we can work like this and then leaning into the head. And just separate so you're working further, just a little bit out as well. And then the rest of it is just scalp massage. Again, we're not sliding the fingers over the scalp, we're just fixing a point and moving like so. And then just moving position. Just moving around. This can feel deeply intense and deeply relaxing at the same time. You feel all kinds of just tight bits of tension as you're working along, flicking under your fingertips into the top of the scalp. And if you're going to finish your treatment like this, the slow down with the intensity, slow down with the rhythm, and just bring your client down. Before I I finish here, I'm actually going to show you one move I'd like to show you. You can also work into the shoulder, the top of the shoulders from this position. And we're literally just coming in, just working in, like so. Get your thumb underneath. It's also a nice move where you can get your fists and just work under, and I just, I'm just rotating. And this can really get deep into the top of the, the back, the top of the shoulders. How does that feel, Mark? Yeah, really good. It's good, isn't it? You can stretch uh, the neck, and one way of doing this is we just gently lift the head, put the right hand onto the left shoulder, the left hand onto the right shoulder, and as you stand up, you're just supporting the weight of the client's head. If you get them to point their toes towards you up here, that also, do you feel that stretch mark? Mm -hmm. That adds to the stretch. You can also allow the client's head to rest onto your stomach and allows you to work into the back of the neck like so. So you're both stretching the neck and working into these muscles. Again, when we go to place the neck down, make sure everything's fully supported and we just gradually work down. <laughs> 